Thank you.
told her to have this one ready. I didn't know what the Lord was leading, but all throughout the storms and this old song, Till the Storm Passes By, many times old Satan whispers, there's no need to try, but keep me safe till the storm passes by. In the dark of the midnight have I oft hid my face while the storm howls above me and there's no hiding place mid the crash of the thunder precious Lord hear my cry and keep me safe until the storm passes by to the storm. take your hymnal this morning turn to page 131 just a few pages over 131 and let's stand together tis so sweet to trust in jesus
please remain standing now as our pastor comes. I'm going to ask Brother Braden Smith to lead us in prayer this morning. Dearly Father, Lord, we thank you once again for another opportunity and privilege that we have to be back in your house. God, we're thankful that we can trust in that name that is above every name, and that name is Jesus. God, you're not only that, but you're our comforter, you're our friend, you're our guide, you're our leader. God, we're thankful for everything that you are. God, it would take days upon weeks upon months and years, God, just to sit here and thank you for everything that you've done. But God, may we take just a moment this morning and say thank you for being our Savior. God, we pray that you would touch us this morning in this service. God, we pray that you would move among us. God, the Holy Spirit is welcome here. God, I pray that you would touch our pastor as he comes. Lift him up. Help him as he breaks the bread of life. God, I pray that you would give us what we stand in need of this morning. God, I pray that you would touch us as the listeners. God, we need a word from you. God, we didn't come looking for maybe a song or a man or a woman, but God, we came looking from a word from heaven. So God, we pray that you would give us that today. God, we pray that you would grant everything that we need, touch every heart that's here. God, I pray if there be one person here that does not know you as Savior, God, may today be the day of salvation. God, may today be the day that they turn from their wicked way and turn to you, God, because it will be the best decision that they could ever make in their lives. God, we pray that you would bless us today, and we'll be careful to give you all our praise, all our honor, and all our glory, because it's not us that's worthy, but it's you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Shake hands with somebody. Let them know you're glad to see them in the house of God today. <clears throat> Appreciate you being here on this wonderful Sunday morning. Appreciate our visitors being with us. If you're here for the first time, lift up your hand, let the ushers find you, and bring you a card. Fill it out and drop it in the offering bag in a little bit. And then let me remind you, this evening at 6.30, our, mid, our evening service, invite you to come on back and be with us. Then on Wednesday night at 7.30, our midweek service, Master Club meets at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. And then our Sunday school next Sunday at 10 o'clock, and everybody planned to be in Sunday school. We're glad to report that David Taylor and Brother Johnny Hemmer are out of the hospital. They're home now. Continue to pray for their recovery. And then let me remind you of nominating committee uh, coming up August the 21st, and the election is August the 28th, and be praying about three deacons that will be going off, and we've got to put three more on, so be looking them out now while you have the opportunity. Ushers, you may come. We'll receive the tithes and offerings that you give today as the Lord has blessed you. Thank God for a beautiful, sunshiny day. I appreciate God letting us be together in church. Hallelujah. Brother Rick, if you will, pray for us. A kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you once again, Lord, for allowing us back in your house, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We have a place like this we can yes. come to, Amen. Lord, just to focus on you and your sweet Holy Spirit, Lord. We thank you for that blessing, Lord. We thank you for what was felt in Sunday school this morning, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would just touch those uh, teachers and workers in Sunday school, Lord, to give them fruits for their labor, Lord. We thank you for the service we've already had this morning. We thank you for the Holy Spirit stopping by. Thank you for Sammy Jr. and the choir and the musicians, Lord. Lift <coughs> them up, Lord, as they sing for your glory, Lord. Lord, we pray for all those that are going through storms, Lord. There's all kind of storms in life, Lord, and everyone has them, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you would just help them, Lord, to focus on you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for guiding, Lord. We thank you for Preacher Sammy. I pray, Lord, that you would stand with him today, Lord. Be with him. Lift him up, Lord, and strengthen him, Lord. Give him what we stand most in need of here. And, Lord, bless this offering. For in the name of Jesus we ask. Amen.
My good singing this morning. Thank you for the good singing choir. We appreciate it from the depths of our heart. And if you will, please turn to Hebrews for a, a few minutes, uh, chapter number 10. Chapter number 10, this is on page 1301. 1301 in the Old Schofield Bible. Hebrews chapter number 10 and verse number 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. I've been in the ministry for a number of years, and I don't believe I've ever preached on believing to the saving of the soul by that ver from that verse. But I want to talk a little bit about that. I was sitting in my study this week, and I got to reading that and meditating upon it. And I thought, well, I believe I'll talk a little bit about that. Now, there is absolutely nothing as important as our soul. And, of course, there is absolutely nothing as horrible as losing our soul. And there's absolutely nothing more, more precious than seeing a soul saved. Jesus said, uh, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Bible says there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels in glory over one sinner that gets saved. So one soul is more precious than all the world. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? Now men may not see the difference in saved people and unsaved people, but there is a difference in saved and unsaved. Men sometimes, they criticize our profession of faith, and they falsely accuse us, not knowing of what they talk what they're speaking about. And of course, they accuse us of not being a Christian. Now that hurts, that really does hurt. Now sometimes, uh, sorry to say, my friend, they are saying that about us because we have invited that criticism by our shabby Christian living. In other words, if you're a Christian and you're not living close to God, out there on the job, wherever you go, people are watching you. And so if you are not living right, then they, you're telling them, come on, criticize me, call me a sinner, say I'm not saved, and you're pretty well right because I'm not living for the Lord like I ought to. Don't do that. Live right and let them lie. Make them lie about that. If they say you're not a Christian, let them be lying about you. Now, my friend, I, I would like for all people to believe in my profession of faith and I know, my friend, and I'm not talking about pride. I'm not talking about being selfish and saying, look at me, I'm somebody. I'm not talking about flesh at all. I'm talking about I want my Lord to be glorified in the way I live. So I don't, I don't want to be a stumbling block to anybody out there. So it is a fact that uh, we can please God if we want to. And then there's, it's a fact that some do not please God. Now, it hurt me very deeply the first time in the ministry that I had somebody to tell a lie on me. It hurt me down deep in my heart that somebody criticized me and said something about me that wasn't true. It broke my heart, and I didn't know how to take that because I didn't think anybody would ever criticize Sammy Kay after he got born again, got saved by the grace of God, and was given it all he had for the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't think anybody would say Sammy Kay is a hypocrite or anything like that. And when I first heard that, it just tore me apart down deep in my soul. What caused that? And then I got to search in my own heart. But then as days went by, I found out that other people are going to criticize you for one thing or another. They're going to say evil things about you. And so you may as well get used to it. You may as well just settle down and say, I'm going to serve God. Praise God. I'm going to praise His name. I'm a Christian. I don't care what you say. I'm going to say hallelujah to the Lord, whether you like it or not. And that's not being arrogant. That's not trying to be a smart headache, brother. That's just telling you I got a, I got a Savior, hallelujah, that I appreciate. I got a Savior that saved my soul, and I really love Him today. And so when I get ready to say, praise the name of the Lord, I want to be able to say it, and I don't care. If you want to be critical, criticize. You want to find fault, find fault. I'm not wanting you to find fault. It hurts me for you to do that, but I'll get over it. 
but I'm telling you, greater is he that's in me than he that's in you. So I'm going to praise uh, the name of the Lord. Now I want you to know, looking into our heart, and we all need to do that from time to time, look into our heart and see what comforts us in the midst of all these accusations and all of these criticisms. What is going to comfort us? I tell you right now, the Lord showed me three little simple things. First of all, we possess life. You and I possess life. No ifs, ands, buts about it. God gave us eternal life the day we got saved. In Acts chapter 2, verse 47, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So there's some people saved, and there's some people that are not saved. But just because some people are not saved and they don't appreciate my salvation doesn't mean I'm gonna, not going to enjoy my salvation. So how can we really know that we're saved by the grace of God. Now, you and I today sitting here, we fit in one of these categories. We're either saved or unsaved. We're either lost or we're saved. We're either God's child or the devil's child. No in between. No in between. You're either born again or you're not. You're either on your way to heaven or you're on your way to hell. Just as simple as that. So look at your heart. Are you saved today? Have you ever been to Jesus for the crimson tide flowing over you, washing you whiter than snow? Have you ever let Jesus Christ come into your heart by faith? You know, you're not going to see him. You're not going to see him with a natural eye till you get to heaven. So don't try to see a vision. Don't try to see some uh, visual thing with a natural man. Praise God, it's by faith. The just shall live by faith. And so we have Jesus Christ in our heart today. Well, if I had to die standing here before you right this moment, if I had to die, I would be going straight to heaven because I, re I received Jesus as my own. Now, we were convicted. How do I know that I've got that life? Well, before I got saved, I didn't care about anybody or anything. I didn't care whether anybody lived or died or went to heaven or hell. It didn't bother me. It didn't bother me about my own soul. I mean, I just lived the way I wanted to live, wide open for the devil. But then something got to bother me. I didn't know all about it at first. I didn't know what it was. But I found out later it was a dear, sweet Holy Ghost was getting on my case. My mama's prayers were reaching heaven. My mother's prayers were being heard. Hallelujah. Being answered by the God of heaven. And he sent the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, the high sheriff of heaven, down to my house. And he got to convicting me of my sin. In John 16, 7, Jesus said, uh, he said, I will send him, that's the Holy Ghost, unto thee. And he said, uh, and when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, why? Because they cursed? No, because they did not believe. He convicts sinners of unbelief. Well, whenever you and I were in sin, we didn't believe, we didn't care, we didn't have any feeling toward the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we realize now something's wrong. Something's wrong with me. I'm not right. There's something wrong with my heart. What can I do? What should I do? Where should I go? Who should I call? i got to get something straightened out here. And then my brother invited me to a revival in Simpsonville, and I went. And you've heard my testimony many times. And that night, I found out I needed Jesus. So all I needed was Jesus, and I got saved. Now, brother, I got life. Do you remember the day or the night, whenever, that you got saved? Everybody in here saved by the grace of God. You remember where you were. You may not remember the time. You may not remember what you prayed exactly. But you remember the place you asked Jesus to be your Savior. Everybody here remembers that. So one good thing that we have that we can just stand up and be comforted when somebody's really drawing a bead on us, when they're coming down to us with criticism and ugly words, hey, we can say, I possess life. I'm really saved. I've got eternal life. Then another thing, not only do we possess life, but we perceive truth. In John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So then this knowledge is of truth is enlightening. In other words, to know something enlightens our spiritual eyes. Knowledge 
is the beginning of wisdom. We find wisdom following knowledge. We get knowledge from the things of God, and then we go on, and then wisdom. Wisdom comes into our very being. And so we see things that we never saw before. We see Him, not with a natural vision, but with a spiritual vision. We see Him in 2 Timothy 1.12, I am not ashamed, Paul said, for I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. What did he say? I know. I know. How can you know? Knowing by receiving the sight, spiritual sight, that God gives us when we get saved. 2 Timothy 1.13, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. So we see him. Then we see also, we see eternal life, like we've never seen it before. Oh, we'd heard the words before, but it didn't even register. Didn't even bother us. First John 5, 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. There's your knowledge again, that you may know that you have eternal life. How many of you here, I'm not going to ask or raise a hand, but how many of you, if I ask, you could raise your hand and say, I know I'm saved. How many in your heart right now, you say, I know I'm saved. I know I've been saved. I've asked Jesus to save me. All right? Then you don't have to worry about it ever, ever, ever again, because God has given you a knowledge, and God has given you a promise. He wrote these things down for those who quit cursing? No, for those, and I'm emphasizing that word, other thing, but for those that believe. These things are written unto you that believe that you may know that you have eternal life. Not going to have, but have. And so John 10, 28, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Many religions cannot see this little uh, truth here, a big truth of eternal life. They can't see it. And so the scriptures are clear and very plain for all to see. In 1 John 5, 11, this is the record. This is the record that God has given unto us eternal life. This life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Simple as that. We see him. We see eternal life. We see his presence. 1 John 3, 24. And hereby we know, there's your knowledge again, we know that he abided in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Isn't it good to be getting up in the morning and, you know, after you get your eyes kind of opened up, you get your bearings to feel the presence of the Lord? Isn't it good to go sit down at the breakfast table and start to eat your breakfast and you bow your head and feel the presence of the Lord? Isn't it good to go out and get in the automobile and start down the road and you feel the presence of the Lord? Isn't it good to go about the daytime all the way talking to God? Every, every once in a while you're saying something to God. You're praising His name. You're thanking Him for His greatness. Hey, Lord God, I love you today. Hey, I love you, Father. I love you, Father. I'm glad that you loved me before I ever loved you. Hallelujah. Boy, I wouldn't take anything for my journey now. You excuse me for all this other stuff. Brother, brother Rick, Rick's got it. Rick Stevens got this junk, and it's something that just hangs on to you like a bleach. But I'll do the best I can. But I just want to praise God for a few minutes and let you know, hallelujah, that I have believed to the saving of the soul. I have believed to the saving of the soul. Now, right here, we see his love. Over in first uh, in John, first John chapter number three, verse 14. We know, there's your knowledge again. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. I just love you. This is not silly. This is not pukey. This is not fleshly. I, but I'm saying this in the depths of my heart. I love, I love you with all my heart. I would rather die today than for any of you to die. I would rather go to heaven today than to lose any of you because I love you because you're my family. You are my family. You're my brothers and my sisters in the Lord. 
And I have a profound love for this church. I love it better than anything on earth. Anything on this earth. I love this church. And then we're talking about believing to the saving of the soul. And it is not. When we talk about believing to the saving of the soul, we're not talking about trying to believe or working at believing. For so, if we could get strong enough and strong enough and go long enough, maybe we could believe to the saving of the soul. That has nothing to do with it. It's not in something we endure. It's not a human achievement. It's not an advancement in our spiritual thinking. It's not any of that. Brother, no, believing to the saving of the soul is a serious, absolutely serious and confident trust in Jesus right then and there. That gives you the believing to the saving of the soul. The very second you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, you have believed to the saving of the soul. I don't know, you can't tell me, and nobody else can. You can't tell me the exact second the Holy Spirit entered you when you got saved. Was it when you were sitting on the pew and you got convicted and you know, boy, I just got to get to that altar. I got to get, so I believe that. I believe what that preacher is preaching. I believe the gospel. And I'm going to go get that. I'm going to go talk to him. Was it when you thought that? Did the Holy Ghost come in right then and save you? I don't know and don't care really when it was. Or was it when I stood up? Or was it when I walked down? Or what was it when I bowed down? Or was it when I called? When I prayed? When I read the scripture? When I, exactly the second the Holy Ghost came in? Don't worry about it. God was doing it all anyhow. He got you in anyhow. And brother, you don't have to worry about when it came in or when he uh, really saved your soul at the exact moment. But I know one thing, brother. When you left there, you knew you'd been with Jesus. You knew you had called upon the right one, and he, re- he really washed you whiter than snow. And now you are saved by the grace of God. The devil will tell you all. You, may, you probably didn't pray the right prayer. Go on, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Don't bother me. Don't bother me with all that stuff. Well, you might not have prayed long enough. The Bible doesn't say anything about praying a long prayer. Matter of fact, some people pray so long, Jesus said they think they're being heard for their much speaking. Sometimes much speaking is just empty jargon. But I'll tell you, when you get down to serious trust in Jesus as the one and only that can save your soul, and you call on him, immediately you're saved. I said some time ago, and I said often, because you know of good Christian people that are sick in body. And you can call upon Jesus when you're sick in body. You may not get healed. He doesn't guarantee you'll get healed every time you call when you're sick in body. But nobody has ever called on him to be saved that didn't get saved. You ever thought about that? Every soul, the Bible says in Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you get saved. I don't care who you are and where you are, the very second you call on Jesus, you get saved. Now, bodily healing, he can heal bodies. He does heal bodies. Go to the hospital, have surgery. Doctor does a good job. Thank God for doctors. But that doctor can't heal you. Has God has to heal your body and, and get you back started again. So give God the glory. So then we have eternal life. And so we, we, whenever we uh, get criticized by somebody, just remember, we possess life. We perceive truth. And then we present all. Over in Romans 6, 13, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now, I have a lot I could say on this, but my time is running short, and I want to hurry up and say one more thing. Listen, my friend, we will, we will see Jesus one day because of this sight he's given us spiritually, what we have now, what we have now. So we uh, are to yield our bodies, our spirits, our wills, our all yield to him. And then... Not only do we possess life and perceive truth and uh, present all, but lastly, 
we praise God. We pray. It leads to praise. Now, if you can't praise God, something's wrong. I'm not saying you're not saved now. Don't get me wrong. But listen, some of you are so tight-lipped until it comes to sports or to politics or to Biden or something like that. You're no longer tight-lipped. But when it comes to Jesus, you go stone dead. I mean, you don't move. Your lips don't even move. Why don't we open up a little bit and praise God? Listen to this. Psalm 109, verse 30. I will greatly praise God. I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. With my mouth. Did you hear me? With my mouth. I'm going to greatly praise the Lord. Well, how can I do that? How can I do that with my mouth shut? I know I can do it down in my heart. He said, with my mouth. Now, you know that implies noise. You know it does. And he said, yea, I will praise him among the multitude. You say, well, Sammy, you can go down to your house and have your devotion, and you can praise God out loud. But don't come up here and start shouting and carrying on. I'm a quiet kind. I'm the quiet kind of Baptist. You sure are, boy. You're living up to your end of the deal. But I want us all, praise God, to get waked up here now. Praise God, we ought to get started out. And every once in a while, open my mouth. Men, women, I don't care who you are. If you're saved by the grace of God, every once in a while, you ought to slip an amen. You know, just kind of hear. I, I can sit there and I hear some of these women say amen, and I want to jump up. I'm not scared. I want to jump up and say, glory, ladies. I'm glad y'all got some gall and grit and grit, grace about you. Yeah, praising the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. In Psalm 89, verse 1, he said, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth, with my mouth, will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Hebrews 13, 15, by him therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips. The fruit of our lips. Open up, folks. Open up and say amen every now and then. It won't hurt you. Your neighbor won't care. If he cares, something's wrong with him. Maybe he's waiting for you to say amen so he can say amen. Now, I'm not trying to start a riot or a wild church here. I'm not trying to start something that's of the flesh now. But I'm trying to tell you, you ought to just get loose when you come to the house of God. you got a lot to praise God for. My goodness, sitting in an air-conditioned church and it's 100 degrees outside, that ain't glory. You ought to praise God for something, Amen. Hey, Amen. I praise God. Felt that air conditioning when I came in this morning. I went out to feed an old, greasy, old, ugly-looking cat that took up at my house, and I've been treating her like a queen and feeding her good stuff, buying food out of the store, feeding that old cat. And I went out there to feed her yesterday, and just feeding that cat, I started running water, just sweating. I was just sweating. Of course, I put her in the shade, put her food in the shade. I'm a good guy, y'all. Good guy. I do good every now and then. But I'm just saying, thank God I could walk in my house and uh, sit down in that air. Feel that. That's God that gave us that. Man, when I was growing up, we didn't even have a fan. You opened the windows, didn't have screens on half the windows, but you opened the windows and let the air blow if it would. And if it didn't, you just, you panted. You hung your tongue out like a dog sometimes. It was so hot. I mean, we suffered. Coming up, I came up in a suffering way, boy, I tell you. That was rough. My daddy was tough as nails. He used to look at his old big rough hands. I thought, I'm going to have hands. Now, I got ugly hands now, but it's not big old rough hands. My hands are affected by medications that I'm taking. These doctors, they don't know everything. But anyway, that's a side track there. But glory to God. Don't you have something to praise God for? Look at that good looking, good looking hunk of man sitting beside you there. Look at a hunk, a hunk, a living, a living love. Yeah. You look at him, man. Yeah, yeah, husband of yours. He don't beat you, provides for you, carries you places, kisses you every now and then, tells you what a beauty you are. Yeah, that's a good husband. Look at that wife, man. Look at that beauty queen sitting beside you. Now, I just hold on. Look at that beauty queen beside you. You can't thank God for her. My wife, Lil Ann, 
I got a picture Sammy showed me this week of my wife. She ought to be in movie stars, you know, in movies. That's the prettiest picture I've seen. I didn't know he had it. I said, can I have this? He said, yeah. I mean, it's Ann's picture, and I'm telling you, I think I'm going to make it big. And I'm going to put it on front of the church somewhere. I want everybody to see how pretty that woman was, is. <laughs> I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to get out of this. But you think I don't thank God for that little woman? I thank God for her every day. I praise God for her. So you and I ought to praise God with our mouth, with our mouth, the Lord God of heaven. Now, look, we can do all of that that I've said. Why? Because we have believed to the saving of the soul. Our soul is saved. Now, praise the Lord. Let's stand. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for all that you've done for us and all that you've given us. Lord, I'm thankful that you keep us by your keeping power after we're saved. Lord, when we do wrong, when we fail, when we make mistakes, <laughs> glory, you don't, you don't write us off. Lord, you keep us. We're yours. We belong to you from now till we meet on heaven's bright shore. Father, bless this church. Bless every person here. Help everybody to take heart today. Let us all look unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith. If there's somebody here lost and undone, needs to be saved.